All right, guys, I am back, back at the house. Just finished a watch bar, and I thought about something, man. I need to do a video for you guys about poppers. One of my favorite baits, hands down. Old school bait, been around for many, many years, but I feel like it's just kind of forgotten about. It gets no love. You know, people don't talk about a popper, man. It's just, I don't know, one of them, one of them baits. But I'm going to go in depth on my popper setup, how I like to fish it, how I like to set it up. I'm going to show you guys a few little tricks, what I'm going to call my secrets, MDJ secrets. That's the name of the video, popper secrets, right? Um, and, and how I utilize this bait and why it's so effective, especially during this time of year. It's smack dab summer right now, super hot, right? And uh, a lot of fish up shallow spawning. I'm talking about bluegill, all type of bluegill, red ear, shell cracker which are the same uh regular bluegill green sunfish long-eared sunfish the list of sunfish is super long and they're all spawning throughout the summer so one of the best ways to emulate that and to catch these big bass eating those brim and bluegill is a popper so let's jump in i'm about to break it all down you guys so of course i'm, I'm gonna go through my setup really quick just to let you guys know you know what i'm using um, this is a seven foot medium heavy absolute my favorite um, a six eight to one gear ratio real Johnny Morris platinum 20 pound monofilament now Let me stop right there. I never use monofilament. This is probably the only technique Maybe a prop bait a prop bait and a popper are going to be the only two techniques that I use monofilament for anymore um, Seaguar has just stepped it up so well in the fluorocarbon categories as well as the braided line categories and you pretty much don't need monofilament anymore with the exception of popper fishing very key now why monofilament versus braid a lot of my casts with a popper are very specific and they're short and they're target oriented cast now when that fish comes up and it eats that bait you don't want a zero stretch line because there's not a lot of distance between you and that fish you want something that has a little bit of give similar to the rod the rod's going to have a little bit of give too to absorb that strike right that's very key so that's why i use monofilament so now let's 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 jump into the popper itself and let me break down some of the key little features that i think a lot of people overlook that make this bait excellent and the proper way to rig it and set it up right, let's talk about poppers themselves okay there's so many of them out there on the market um <clears throat> they usually come in two different sizes a quarter ounce or a half ounce. I like the half ounce size It's a little bit larger. I think that fits the profile of a bluegill a little bit better So that's the one that I like to roll with okay So many great brands out there the one that I'm holding right here is a yellow magic and this thing has been chewed to smithereens as you guys can see um, But there's the Rico There's the splash it pop fire uh, Old school p70s my old guys out there my old school cats, the P70, which was made by, um, oh gosh, who made the P70? Oh, I'm drawing a blank right now. Drop it in the comments. I, yeah, I can't, I'm drawing a blank right now. Anyways, the P70, I think it was a Rebel or something. Yeah, I think it was Rebel. Zell Rowland designed it. Anyways, um, there are just so many great baits out there. But again, little, little nuances and little tricks and tips that you can increase your catch ratio tremendously with this little bait and we're going to go through that step by step so the first thing i'm going to talk about is how you tie your popper on now when you buy a popper none of them come with a split ring like your crank baits and your jerk baits they all have just a, a line tie for you to tie directly to that now the first thing i want to tell you is you need to learn how to tie a loop knot okay and i can do that in another video but for this video i'm just going to show you guys what it looks like and you will get the idea. So what the loop knot does, it acts like your split ring or your speed clip, right? It allows that bait to move freely and it gives it a lot more action. That's so key, okay? When you're talking about popper fishing. That's the first thing. The second thing is you'll notice I got mismatched treble hooks on here. And let me explain that. So in the rear, I have a feathered treble hook. And then the front, I have a EWG style hook and why is that the feather treble hook is obviously necessary to entice the strike sometimes I put a little chartreuse in the tail it kind of mimics that bluegill just a little bit better um, 
but this hook right here is the is the money this is the juice this is the key that's a short shank ewg hook right there in the front and the reason i like that hook is because when you hook them on that short shank you got them okay very rarely do i have fish jump off that hook right there but i don't have um but in the in the rear i still need the the flashiness and the strike um basically the, the attractor of the feather treble hook which is tied on a on a round treble hook i don't tie my own feathers otherwise i would probably put an ewg back there as well so there's that um next thing i want to jump into and, and and it's the final thing you'll notice if you look at this bait really really close you'll notice something else about it i don't have split rings on my hook hanger okay we're going to get really really in depth on that what i use here in place of split rings are 50 pound cigar flipping braided line and i've tied those on because now i have much more flexibility in those hooks and you lose tremendously amount less fish okay split rings can only turn about a quarter turn and then that bass has leverage and they can throw that bait so easily when you have the braided line you can see i just keep turning that bait right and it just allows that hook to follow that fish as it thrashes around um i'll give a quick shout out to Ot defoe Ot defoe has an amazing video on his youtube channel if you guys want to check that out i'll drop the link in the description box on how to tie um your your, your braided split rings for your treble hook so that's another killer key so that's it right there that's my that's my popper setup i wanted to go through that a couple little secrets in there with the braided split rings as well as the loop knot I'm calling them secrets. A lot of you guys may know this already, but a lot of you may not. So, but this is a way to increase your strike ratio. And this is a way to keep them hooked up 100%. And then last but not least, this is a technique that you definitely want to get out there and practice your casting. This is a very target oriented technique. You need to be able to make that cast. If you can't make that cast, you don't catch that bass. And so time on the water, once again, is paramount. So here it is. My popper set up. I hope you guys give us a shot this summer. You will catch those big giant bass that you see guarding those brim beds all the time. You'll start putting them in a the boat when you start playing around with this popper right here. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Make sure y'all like, subscribe, drop me a comment. I'll see y'all on the water, and I'll see y'all on the next video. Peace.